Hello everyone. Uh, good morning, good evening, and welcome to the uh, welcome to this webinar by Product School on product KPIs and metrics that every product manager should know. Uh, before we jump into it, a quick background about myself. Uh, well, my name is Zafir Rais. I'm a senior product manager at Zalando, uh, which is uh, the largest and leading fashion e-commerce platform in Europe. Uh, I'm based out of Berlin. Uh, and before Zalando, I've been associated with uh, different domains as a product manager uh, in edtech. Uh, I worked with uh, Future Skills Prime, which is uh, uh, an initiative sponsored by the government of India for the IT upskilling uh, in India. I've also worked for companies like Cornerstone in the past. Uh, before we jump into the uh, the discussion on KPIs and metrics, uh, let's talk about the synergies between data and product managers. Uh, well, if you're building a product without data, uh, I wouldn't call it a product. It's only an opinion because most of the things would start with, I think XYZ feature would work. I think uh, this uh, XYZ feature would not work. Uh, well, as product managers, we should not be talking in terms of, I think we should instead let data do the talking. Uh, if data is talking on your behalf, it makes your life easier uh, to convince the stakeholders to get buy-in from stakeholders, uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, it it just, it just leads to fever arguments of, of product managers between different stakeholders. Uh, we all might have heard about uh, this quote, which says, "Data is the oil of 21st century." But Peter Sonnengard has taken it a step further, and he calls analytics as the combustion engine. Uh, this is beautiful uh, because just like a combustion engine cannot work without oil, uh, and oil is is more or less useless without uh, a combustion engine, uh, product managers should not be working without data, or rather cannot work uh, without data. Uh, that's how critical data is for product managers. Uh, always strive to be data-driven product manager rather than an opinion-driven product manager. Uh, and I think that's what uh, that's what the difference between great and good product managers lies. Uh, well, data will talk. Uh, data will uh, definitely talk uh, 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 if you're if you're willing to listen to it. Uh, and uh, uh, if you torture data long enough, it will tell you secrets of how to make your product successful. As I said earlier, uh, 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 you know, building a product without uh, data. Uh, you, you're only building. Uh, you're only making an opinion, and continuing to build the, uh, a product without data is the biggest crime in product management. Uh, data, and finally, data is a product manager's best friend, as I see it. Uh, what are the tools to capture? I think this is not really important. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, these are great tools: Google Analytics, Amplitude, Mixpanel. I've, I've used them myself. These are great tools, and it will present you with a ton of data. However, uh, it is useful uh, only if you measure, uh, only if you use them properly, only if you measure the data that is coming out of it. Uh, uh, hence, the, everything comes later. I think we first need to be very clear as to what we are doing with data. Uh, make use of KPIs and metrics to decide if the hypothesis that you're working on uh, is going to create the right wave, the wave that you intend it to create, uh, to have. Okay, uh, now coming to KPIs and metrics, but what are these KPIs and what are these metrics that we keep talking about? Uh, well, KPI stands for Key Performance Indicator, uh, and you have three very important terms that come in uh, uh, over here, uh, which is the first one is key, which signifies how important uh, uh, you know uh, a KPI is. It, it, so it shows the importance uh, of this thing that we're trying to measure. The second one is performance. Uh, so it's measuring performance probably over a given period of time uh, because performance needs to be measured over, over a time period. So hence, it measures your performance. Uh, An indicator which signifies that it's quantitative in nature, which also means that there are a lot of numbers uh, uh that you you need to work with when you're talking about kpis and metrics uh so it's a quantifiable measure of uh, performance that demonstrates how effectively you are achieving your main strategic objectives 
on the other hand uh, metrics are uh, uh, metrics are measurements of specific activities or processes they are more tactical in nature uh, there's something that 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 are measured probably on a daily basis and uh, uh, there's some sorry there's something that are measured on a daily basis uh, and they are more tactical in nature this is important every kpi is a metric however every metric might not be a kpi uh, it's again it, it's 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 uh, it's a superset and a subset kind of an analogy wherein uh, a metric is a superset and a kpi can be a subset of this metric superset uh, I, i'll take a good exam uh, example uh, of uh, you know which might help us i understand the difference between a kpi and a metric uh, let's take an example of uh, netflix at this point of time now we all know netflix is struggling with uh, with uh, with a low subscriber rate many of its existing subscribers are dropping off uh, and that's where the problem of customer retention comes in so customer retention is probably one of the most important kpis that uh, that netflix is measuring uh, currently and how is it measuring uh, it's making use of the return rate uh, metric uh, or probably the nps metric to measure the customer retention uh, now hoping uh, this uh, difference is clear uh, and now uh, uh, we should be good to jump into it and look at the 10 product metrics and kpis that are extremely important for product success uh, now these metrics could be across products uh it is not necessary that all of them apply to your product it also it is also possible that none of them apply to your product uh it is by far, by no means this is an exhaustive exhaustive list of kpis and metrics you know you can have n number of metrics that you you you're measuring uh why the number 10 i don't know uh, probably because i like the number 10 uh and according to me these are 10 important uh, metrics that probably you should be measuring at your end uh it also gives you a good uh head start or uh, you know or an entry point into exploring these uh, kpis and metrics and how you should be working with them cool having said that uh coming to daily active users and monthly active users uh, uh well uh, you know you know this this should actually actually be active users uh and and we'll see uh what that means now the end goal of any product is to generate money uh, products are owned by companies and and companies are are here with the intention of generating profits and earning money and being more profitable uh, however to generate money the primary focus is to get users on the platform you may not be able to generate the expected uh, revenue from your product uh, or your company if the users are not coming on the platform hence that is that is important over here and that is why the active users uh, metric uh however we do not want any user on the platform uh, th there's a very specific definition of what you call as an active user active users are users that perform some valuable activity on the platform right now this valuable activity would be closely linked uh, to the to the dna of the product for example watching a video might be uh, uh, you know the quality of an active user on youtube sharing pictures is something that an active user would do on instagram similarly reading a blog is something that an active user on medium.com would do active user active users can be measured in different time frames uh, like monthly active users or weekly active users depending on the product and the requirement that it has DUE uh, DAU uh, generally is used uh, for mobile applications uh, because mobile application is something which 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 is a very personal device you carry it on a daily basis there are multiple times when uh, when you have the mobile in your hand uh, and you're accessing different applications and uh, DAU is is mostly used to measure uh, 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 mobile application products online games and social networking sites because their usage is more on a daily basis however this is not limited and it can be extended to other products as well uh, the ratio of daily active users upon multi uh, uh, <laughs> monthly active users is useful in identifying the stickiness of the product so how do you define stickiness of the product it's the ratio of dau divided by uh, the mau uh, 
uh, a, uh, a stickiness of 20 percent is is normally uh, considered to be a good stickiness, uh, stickiness score uh, however a stickiness of more than 20 percent is generally considered to be a, a very successful product uh, stickiness also allows uh, uh, uh to track growth uh it's it's an important measure to track growth or also to track the decline of the product uh if it's going up or down in either case uh not every product uh should be measured on uh on the basis of these metrics uh because not every product needs to be used on a daily basis to be successful uh, a good example of that could be uber uh i may not use uber every day but I use Uber, uh, or let's say on on a Friday night when I'm out drinking and I don't want to drive my car. That's when Uber comes in. Airbnb, uh, it, it's a great product, but I don't use it on a daily basis. I would be using it uh, maybe once a month or once a quarter when I'm when I'm off to vacation or where where I want to book, uh, uh, you know, a, a stay. So not every product needs to be measured on a daily basis. Uh, what is daily active users? Well, it's 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 a number. Uh, so there's, there's no formula, but it's the number of unique users visiting your application during a predefined one day period. Uh, the next one is uh, monthly recurring revenue. Uh, monthly recurring re recurring revenue, simply put, is the income that a company can expect to generate every single month. Uh, it measures an organization's financial health. Uh, it's it's really important for SaaS business models, uh, which are based on on, on a subscription scheme. Uh, so you know Amazon Prime, Spotify, uh, uh, Netflix, etc., which work on on a subscription model. Uh, this becomes an important metric to be tracked. Uh, however, however, on a on a standalone basis, it might not make a lot of sense to a product manager. Uh, it needs further analysis, right? Uh, it needs further analysis because this can help you identify where are the customers dropping off and eventually it will lead you to also understand the, the why of it why is this happening so uh, in order to increase the mrr of a product uh, you know it, it's something that should uh, reside with the product managers uh, the different types of mrr mrrs are a uh, new mrr uh, expansion mrr churn mrr and a net mrr uh, what's the formula the formula for mrr is monthly average revenue per user into the total number of users uh, in case of b2b companies users can also be replaced with businesses or accounts uh, that you are catering to as a product the next one is customer lifetime value or cltv uh, cltv it also uh, it allows you to determine the amount of revenue that can be generated from a user or account in the long run right uh in the long run would mean the lifetime of the user uh again let's uh take an example of netflix cltv displays or defines the average profit generated from one user before they cancel their netflix subscription now how does netflix define the lifetime of uh, uh of of a user uh take an example of me uh uh, if I'm paying 10 euros per month for my Netflix subscription and I keep the subscription on for a period of uh, 12 months, that is one year, uh, the my 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 total customer lifetime value would be 120 euros in case of uh, for Netflix. Similarly, uh, it is also calculated. Uh, interesting thing to note is that uh, Netflix has one month as uh, as a free trial, uh, the first month. So that also needs to be taken into consideration when i'm calculating the lifetime of the user so in this case my lifetime is 13 months and not 12 months uh as i said average lifetime is till the time the user is a paying customer of the platform uh well it aims to identify how much you should spend to attract a new customer uh at an uh you know at an early stage uh based on the profit generated from the user uh this could also help companies like uh, Amazon Prime identify that what should be the cost uh, of their Prime membership, considering that they are offering the first month as free. Uh, so, uh, so the first month is free could also be taken as a customer acquisition cost, which we will look at later. 
but it, it's a it's a good measure to identify uh, how much you should be spending to attract a new customer based on the uh, on the profit or uh, the value that the customer is generating at the end of the period. Uh, again, uh, it helps you identify the right customer acquisition channels. Uh, where should you be spending the money? Uh, is it on social media campaigns or uh, maybe television advertisements or print media, etc.? Uh, or should you be giving marketing schemes and discounts and offers in this case? Uh, what are the purchasing channels that you should be using? Should you be spending money on Google Ads? Uh, and what are the retention strategies that that could be used? Uh, I remember, for that matter, when I when I cancelled my Net Netflix subscription for the first time, they they came up to me with with an offer that hey, we're giving you two months free, please stick back uh, with our platform. So that's one of the retention strategies. Uh, the formula for CLTV, uh, well, it's the average revenue per user into the average lifetime uh, of users on the platform. The next one is uh, customer acquisition cost. Uh, now, what is customer acquisition cost? Well, it's something which is mainly used uh, uh, by uh, uh, product marketing teams. Uh, what it does is it computes the cost of acquiring new customers, including uh, marketing spends, uh, advertisements, sales expenditures, etc. So, if you look, if you look at its formula, it, it's 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 everything, all the expenditures combined, the salaries, the overheads, the marketing spends, etc. Uh, upon the number of new customers that you've managed to acquire. And now for PMs, for product managers, it is important to know the values as it complements other metrics. Uh, how does it complement other metrics? Well, you know, it can also help you uh, identify what's the uh, what's what should be the free period in case of a subscription model. Should you have the first month free? Uh, how should you how should you be taking in the money? Uh, is it that I do not provide any credit card details, uh, and you know you enjoy the first month for free, or you 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 take my credit card details. I will not be charged for the first month, but for the next twelve months I will be charged, or I will be charged for the entire thirteen months. Out of it, the first month would be free. So uh, you know, in this way, it 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 helps product managers to understand how it complements other metrics and how can I improve the other metrics. Well, an ideal CLTV to CAC ratio uh, is three is to one. That means uh, uh, the, 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 the amount of value that a particular customer is generating should be three times the cost that is spent in acquiring uh, the customer. Uh, less means you're spending too much. So if the ratio is less, that means if the denominator is, is higher, uh, so let's say in this case, it's three, uh, uh, the ratio is three to two. This basically means that you're spending too much money in order to acquire new customers, and those new customers are not generating the expected uh, value uh, that we thought they would derive. Uh, whereas spending more means you're spending too little and you're missing out on new business opportunities. Uh, let's take a uh, let's take a CLTV to CSE ratio of five is to one. This basically means that uh, a, you know, for for every uh, every dollar spent uh, in order to get the customer, uh, you are generating five dollars worth of business. Uh, it also means that you, if you spend more money in acquiring new customers, uh, the the total revenue generation could be higher in this case because uh, you know by just spending one dollar, you're you're making a business of five dollars. So you know you might want to uh, increase the denominator. So that uh, ultimately it increases the numerator in this case as well. Formula: uh, It is the sum of all costs involved in customer acquisition efforts upon the total number of customers acquired as a result. The next one is uh, uh, the session uh, session duration. Uh, well, it's one of the easiest metric to track for digital product usage. And what is it? Uh, it calculates the session duration of a product uh, of a group. Sorry, of a group of bounced a churned users, uh, and this helps me uh, identify how to improve user direction, right? Uh, user user interaction. My bad. Uh, uh, it leads you to uh, it helps you to understand what made the users churn. Uh, now this could be a certain page. Uh, this could be something very annoying on a particular page. So the average amount of time that the user is spending on the platform in one session. Uh, will give you insights on 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 uh, these metrics and how to fix this. Uh, the formula, well, it's the total time spent by users 
on the product divided by number of users bounce rate uh, bounce rate is again uh, it's a very easy metric to uh, target uh, to track uh, google analytics personally is is one of my favorite and best ways to measure bounce rate it also happens to be the cheapest uh, since google analytics is free uh, now it helps product managers identify any page where the users bounce off without spending a lot of time uh, in my experience uh, bounce rate really helped me tackle one problem where my sign up form was really long and and i saw that uh, users are bouncing off from that page and that helped me uh, shorten the form optimize it and uh, reduce the overall time required to fill the form uh, that that's a way in which bounce rate has helped me improve uh, one of my uh, product kpis uh, it's also a hint that something is wrong uh, well if you have different entry channels into uh, into your product uh, let's say some of them land on the home page some of them some of them land on the about us page or some of them land on the sign up, sign in or sign up page right if you have different entry channels into the product uh, it gives you a hint that something is wrong with a particular entry channel uh, because the product is the same the functionalities are same why is this happening uh that users are bouncing uh, from this particular page uh this could be a hint that something is wrong and need a fix it it uh, it needs an urgent fix uh it actually impacts other metrics like uh dau or mrr uh, as uh, if the use if the users are bouncing off from your platform uh well you you will not really have a good dau or you would not be you would not be able to generate the revenue out of that user it's easy but it's a very important metric that needs to be solved uh, that needs to be tracked what is a bounce rate well it's the ratio of user it's a ratio or a percentage of users who visited uh, your your product or your page only uh, you who visited only one page of the application before the leaving the application so out of 100 users who come to your platform if 40 users uh, just drop off after visiting one page your bounce rate is 40% uh the next one is customer retention uh this is a, a rather important one uh it is the ability of your product uh, to retain customers after a certain period of time uh, uh let's take an example of netflix again uh it's been a favorite while taking examples but uh in case of netflix uh how many users uh, remain or are retained on the platform after the one month of free subscription that ends now that number would 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 give netflix an insight as to what is their customer retention rate uh it's it's actually a parameter to measure the stickiness uh, of your product uh, uh according to big panel uh, average crr for most software products is below 20% uh, over a period of 8 weeks so that's that's pretty low uh what is it it's the percentage of users who prefer to stay with the platform uh it could be you know for whatever time period if, if netflix wants to see uh what's the customer acquisition cost it would take the time period as one month wherein you have the free subscription to the platform uh it define uh now what is important over here is you need to define what a returning user is and what your desired time period is for example is a mere sign in enough uh to consider a retained user uh well Mm, wouldn't be the case in most applications but uh, that's something that you re you really need to identify what do you define as a returning user just just the way uh, you know we define for active users a returning user is really important uh, is the returning user doing any activity or just uh, do you call that user retained just because the user is still there on the platform he, he, you know he might be logging in one month uh, once in a month once in a year uh that's something that would differ from product to product uh complicated formula uh, what is crr right so let's say if i'm calculating the crr for a particular month uh what i would do is number of users at the end of the given period so number of users let's say at the end uh, of uh, uh july so 31st july what's the number of users on the platform uh that can be 120 let's say the 120 users minus the new customers gained in the time period so in in the in the month of july i gained let's say 20 users right uh, and what were the number of users at the start uh, of the time period 
Uh, well, let's say in this case, this is 90. So I have 120 users right now. 20 users came in uh, uh, in this one month. Uh, and what were the number of users at the start of the time period? That was 90. So uh, this gives you uh, a, a decent, uh, a good enough customer retention rate. And, and that's how a customer retention rate can be calculated. Uh, it's almost a 90% customer retention rate in the previous example. Okay, moving on to the next one, that is churn rate. Uh, now, churn rate is 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 the exact opposite uh, of uh, uh, the previous one, that is customer retention rate. Uh, it measures the users that left your platform. Right, not retained, but left the platform. Uh, it measures the number of users lost in a given time period. Uh, what are the types of churn? Uh, now, the types of churns could be user churn or a revenue churn, where you're losing out on revenue uh, or you're losing out on users in this case. Uh, revenue churn is obviously uh, revenue churn is an effect of user churn. Uh, if you're losing users on the platform, there would obviously be uh, 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 a churn in the revenue as well uh it makes sense to pay attention to revenue churn rather than customer churn uh because customer churn uh although although customer churn gives you gives you insight into customer satisfaction so if you really want to understand uh what the customer pain points are how satisfied the customer is with the product you should be looking at a user churn however uh revenue churn is 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 important Right, because that's where you're losing out on money. You're losing out on uh, on your revenue. So I think that that uh, deserves uh, more focus. Uh, the average churn rates are less than ten percent of MRR. Uh, in in an ideal case, uh, churn end at the low uh, low end of two percent would be considered good. So if if you're losing, uh, uh, if your if your revenue churn is is around. At the lower end of two percent uh, of your MRR, that should be a good uh, figure. Churn rate, user churn rate would be the total customers lost upon the total uh, customers. Uh, similarly, in case of revenue, it would be the revenue lost upon uh, the total revenue that you generate. Uh, the next one uh, is the NPS, Net Promoter Score. Uh, what is a net promoter score? So a net promoter score is uh, uh, is a survey which is used to measure customer loyalty or user loyalty and satisfaction by asking the users how likely they are uh, to recommend the product on a scale of 1 to 10. So uh, to put it short, uh, there's a scale of 1 to 10 and I will ask the user how uh, did you like my product? If yes, how likely are you to recommend uh, uh, this product to uh, to your friends and family i'm sure a lot of you have filled this for um, for some product or the other well what the what is the product trying to do with this they are trying to measure the net promoter score uh now net promoter uh, the respondents are usually classified into three categories uh they are uh promoters they are passives and they are detractors promoters are, are loyal product users who will use the product service and actively refer the platform, right? So if you if you really like something, um, uh, you would you would obviously tell your friends and family that hey, this is a great product. I I highly recommend you to use it. Uh, they fuel organic growth, right? So you do not really have to spend money to grow your product. In this case, it's 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 kind of like free marketing. On a, on the scale, they would rate the product uh, in the survey between nine and ten. Uh, passive. Passives rate the product six to eight and like the product. However, they're prone to shift their loyalties to a competitor if the competitor is able to pull them towards uh, itself. Uh, whereas detractors rate the product between zero and six and in general are not satisfied with the product. Uh, you know, a, a good example could in this case could be of Apple. Uh, now, Apple probably has a very high uh, net promoter score because there are certain users who are hardcore Apple loyalists and who would, you know, who would, uh, you know, be the first in line whenever there's a new iPhone launch or any new Apple product uh, which is launched. So, Apple, for example, has a very good net promoter score. Uh, uh, detractors can do negative publicity as well. Uh, and this will eventually hamper the image of the product. Uh, again, a good example of this could be, uh, you know, the case of Samsung, where 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 phones. Uh, I think it was the Note 
uh, where phones started uh, going up in flames and that caused a lot of negative publicity and your passives uh, quickly turned into detractors in this case. Uh, NPS generally lies between minus 100 and 100 uh, and, and negative NPS scores means detractors are more than promoters. Obviously, minus 100 would mean all the people that you surveyed uh, are detractors and 100 would mean all the people that you surveyed are promoters of the product. Uh, some stats in 2018, Netflix had an NPS of 64, uh, PayPal had scored uh, 63 uh, and uh, 54, 53 and 49 for Amazon, Google, and Apple, respectively. Uh, be polite. Uh, uh, be polite in timing the, uh, the, the survey. Uh, so it's really important to ask them, uh, the, to ask the survey at the right time, right? So uh, for example, you do not want to ask the user to fill a survey when they're in a really, uh, 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 you know, when, when, when you are in, when, when something has gone wrong, right? So ask the user if you would want to, uh, uh, refer when they've successfully placed an order, right? Uh, do not ask them when they when when the order order placement has failed. That would lead to a bad score. Also, you want to ensure that you're getting genuine responses. So try to keep the uh, the survey shorter because the longer the survey, the the more annoying it gets for the users to fill a long form. Uh, keep it short. Keep it short and sweet, uh, and place it strategically. The net promoter score is the percentage of promoters minus the percentage of distractor, uh, detractors. Uh, now, uh, the last one, and probably one of the most important metrics uh, uh, that companies and products would uh, track, uh, not star metric. The not star metric uh, is uh, what's, first of all, what's the not star? Uh, the not star is the anchor of the northern sky. It's a landmark. Uh, or a sky marker that helps those who follow uh, mostly sailors who follow determined direction uh, as it glows brightly to guide and lead. So it, it helps those who follow uh, determine the direction as the star glows uh, brightly uh, to guide and lead. Uh, it is the most important metric of the product true. Uh, and what's uh, how did it start? So taking a cue from the definition of uh, North Star, uh, entrepreneur Son Ellis uh, coined the term North Star metric for, for the first time in his book, uh, Hacking Growth. Now, this was done to reduce the administration around it uh, and to have a singular goal for the entire uh, company or for a department. Uh, it defines the success of the product or the company. So what does success mean for a product or a company? Uh, it's linked to the vision of the company. So, uh, uh, so uh, for example, Facebook. Facebook has a vision of uh, connecting people and, and making it a more social place. So uh, it would be interesting to know what the North Star metric of Facebook is. Uh, again, we'll take an example of Netflix. I promise this is the last time you'll be hearing Netflix in this webinar. But uh, Netflix's vision is becoming the best global entertainment distribution service. Thus, we can safely say that the North Star metric for, uh, for Netflix would be session duration as it denotes that users are spending more time on the uh, on Netflix because the entertainment quotient of Netflix is really high. There is no defined formula for this. It, it's more of a strategic uh, uh, metric which, which the team needs to come together and uh, uh, have this metric so that the rest of the team can follow it. Finally, uh, we've, we've, we've gone through 10 important metrics and KPIs, but uh, just wanted to leave you with some thoughts. Uh, this is just an overview. Uh, this, these ten metrics are uh, these are these are not an exhaustive list, as I mentioned before. The purpose of this was to introduce you to these metrics, right? Uh, hence, uh, it, it's more to help you inculcate a, a much more data-driven attitude. It's not uh, exhaustive. There are many other metrics that that might be important for your product, but I think this is a good starting point. Uh, again, to become a more data-driven product manager. Uh, dive into the details of each uh, each one of them. Uh, look for metrics that might be relevant to your product and to your organization. Uh, well, we cannot do a deep dive in this webinar because each metric would then take a, take a separate webinar in itself. 
uh, what are the next steps for you? Uh, so the next steps for you could be identify the metrics for your product and start measuring it. Uh, or also, you can also think of some popular products uh, and think of what their uh, 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 not star metric could. Uh, oh, sorry, what their uh, uh, what their met, uh, you know the different metrics that you that they measure. A good example would be a not star metric and. This is something that can also be used in cases of interviews for product management, wherein uh, you can ask the interviewer, hey, what's your North Star metric? Or according to me, this is the North Star metric, uh, you know, is, is my thinking in alignment? So I think that can lead to a good conversation in your uh, interview as well. Uh, finally, don't just track uh, metrics as important it is to measure and track. Uh, it is also important to make use of the data that is coming out of this. Uh, and remember, uh, build an, uh, build a product, not an opinion. Uh, finally, uh, I want you to leave the, I want you to leave uh, leave you with this uh, quote from Mark Twain, uh, and he says, "Data is like garbage. You better know what you're going to do with it before you collect it." And that's uh, and and. Uh, that's why uh, the product tools come in later. You you need to know your metrics. You need to know what you want to measure and why you want to measure. Uh, and that will make your life easier. Thank you so much for spending time. Uh, if, if you want to stay connected, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'd be happy to answer more questions on this topic or any other topic in general. Thank you so much. See you later.